Hello, and welcome to another episode of NAPO Standout, the podcast to help you better your business. I'm your host, Productivity Catalyst, Claire Kumar, and am I excited about today? I'm excited about every episode, but today I have actually a longtime friend and a NAPO member since 2009, Carol Williams with us. Why Carol Williams? Well, she is a professional organizer who really stepped into productivity coaching right away in her business and evolved into being a full-time coach. And I had a, a similar journey moving from organizer to productivity coach and thought I need to be uh, fully trained as a coach. So I too work as a coach and I wanted to bring Carol's expertise to you because she has really built a successful business. And I think it's going to be very well your, worth your time to hear what that looks like. So let me tell you just a little bit about Carol before I uh, bring Carol into the conversation. So like I said, Carol's been a member of NAPO since she first created her business in 2009. She's a certified business and life coach, single mom of two teen boys. I can talk to you about that too. Uh, NAPO member Carol Williams understands being pulled in many directions, right? Through her coaching, she helps business owners with ADHD become more productive, profitable, and powerful so that they may live playfully and powerfully in business and in life. She loves dancing and playing in the outdoors and she resides in her home town of Sutton, New Hampshire. So Carol Williams, my good friend, welcome to the podcast. Woohoo! I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, Claire. It's great to see you. Uh, just so for everybody um, uh, listening, uh, the podcast is going to be on YouTube as well. So you can find us there on the NAPO National Channel. And uh, so if you want to watch along or listen, what we what I thought we would do with the podcast the, this year is kind of give great content to you in a format that you enjoy. So you'll be able to see Carol's radiant face, the the salt lamp glowing in the back behind her, the plant and the word believe. So just to set the stage for for you, um, I'm speaking to Carol and she's always radiant and grounded when she shows up for something. And uh, so Carol, let's start the interview with a question about understanding your journey into coaching, how did that become something that you decided to focus on? Yeah, well, thank you, Claire. It's wonderful to be here. And what I know about myself is I usually make too long of a story. So I'm gonna give you complete reign to interrupt me, tell me we need to make it shorter, get to the point, whatever that is, okay? Uh, as you said, in 09, it was the Great Recession. And a lot of people, you know, they're not too different than now, except for now it's the whole world, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's the whole world in every single way. However, I, I had sort of my own mini version of this uh, in 09 when I got laid off, right? So I became a professional organizer. We won't go into prior of 09. And what I realized with, I think it was my second or third client that um, I was really like helping them deeply, like I didn't even know really what coaching was, mm -hmm. but I kind of thought that that's what I was doing. Right. And then I had this almost like fear of it. I, I had this um, imposter syndrome really for, I don't know, five or six years, a while. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I'm not a coach. I'm not really, I'm not really certified as a coach. I can't yeah. call myself a coach. I'm really just an organizer. Like I just had all of that. But the truth is that really I am always was a coach, even maybe when I was 18. And I first started college and I went into um, psychology. Mm. So I wanted to know more how the brain worked and I love people deeply. Okay. So that's how I got into coaching was thinking that that's the last thing I'd want to do. Wait, you what? More? Wait. <laughs> what do you mean? It was the last thing you wanted to do because I felt like an imposter. Oh, oh, okay. So even though you had the self-awareness realizing you were doing that, you still felt uncomfortable sort of stepping I, in. Yeah, it was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like I, I knew that I was doing it, but yeah. I didn't think I was qualified to do it. So tell me, where did the coach training come in your journey then? Is that the key that sort of said, now I'm valid, I'm feeling like I sure. actually... This is a really yeah. great question. So the first time I put up my shingle, 
uh, I want to say it was about 2014, mm -hmm. where I changed the front page of my website at the urging of my marketing director, my, my person I hired to do that, right? Yeah. And he said, we got to at least change that first page to call yourself a productivity coach. Uh -huh. And I was like, <gasps> okay. So like, then I was out, you know, I was like, yeah. you know, the jig was up. Can I pause there? Because I had a similar evolution. It took me a lot longer than you. Did you have any fear of letting go of something when you decided to? So there was, I understand the sort of imposter piece, but what about the letting go of something by focusing on productivity rather than organizing? Was there anything of that for you? Um, I was doing a lot of letting go because I like was in the middle of a really awful relationship and got a divorce and all the rest of it so the truth was is i was just trying to figure myself out in all my free time mm -hmm. you know so i don't think it was like oh i love organizing so much it was more like i'm not a coach because i'm not trained to be a coach so how can i be a coach okay so this was really stepping just stepping more fully into how you wanted to show up so you you were doing other big letting go i get it okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that was 14. Mm -hmm. and what was happening was uh you asked for that pivotal moment mm -hmm. i can give you that pivotal moment that came right in around um 2015 ish and it was this moment where my oldest son i wanted to send him to private high school yeah and that was going to cost a lot of money, but I felt like that was the right move for him. Mm -hmm. And then I asked, I had to ask myself a question because I knew that if I were to work there as an employee, I would get free tuition. Mm -hmm. But I knew if I worked there, I couldn't do all the things I was doing. Like, you know, I was organizing, I was coaching, I was an Evernote certified consultant. Uh, you know, I did rental stuff on the side as a, as a, you know, another way to make money. I mean, you name it, I was trying to figure myself out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had a little come to Jesus with myself. If you want to say that, uh, yeah. not everybody might say that, but it was like a little, little figuring myself out. And I said, okay, if I had to give up my business, what, if anything, would I miss? And the answer was crystal clear. And the answer was coaching. Mm. And I said, I, I don't care about organizing. I don't care about the rental stuff. I don't care about Evernote. I don't care about whatever else flew in. But boy, oh boy, if I didn't get to coach, I was sad inside. So in I that love moment, that. I was a coach. So you asked yourself, what would you miss if you had to give mm -hmm. up all of that and, and mm -hmm. take a job, for example? Mm -hmm. What would you miss? Correct. I love that. What would I miss? Yeah. The simple, answer was coaching. Question. Yeah. Great yeah. question for anybody who's thinking about refining or narrowing their focus um, to listen to what what calls you. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Um, just back to the coach training, was there anything that you think would help listeners who are perhaps thinking of productivity as a piece or coaching in particular as a piece that would help them figure out how to make a decision about investing in coaching and how, how would you make the decision of where to study and what's what what coaching program to adopt i get asked that more than once um mm -hmm. all the time and i don't have a great answer about where to study because i think it, it that is gonna there, there's almost two I, i'll say go to the icf and ask some people <laughs> but yeah. how i i had a complete backdoor approach to all of this mm -hmm. and is completely opposite to, you know, I was 18 years old, I went to went to college, I got the degree and I worked in that profession until right. I got laid off in 09, right? So I did the traditional route. When I did this, see my whole, it, it not again, I'll go back to what's happening now. A lot of people are uprooted. A lot of people have to refigure themselves out right now. And, and, and even so there might be some new organizers listening to this. There might be some new productivity professionals listening to this. Mm -hmm. um, there right and they might be serving people in transition and new coaches probably listening to this too yes right? yeah so so what to know is is that when when we're sh we have that shake up in our lives now we're not necessarily going on that like tried and true path or whatever and i had that shake up in my life i got laid off and then i then i had to have this divorce because it was clear that that's what needed to happen right so i'm so busy getting shaken up and by now um 
Like I'm not 21 years old anymore. I have a lot of big expenses. I got to figure myself out. So Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like, you know, shoot first, aim later. I just need to get, I just need to get some money in the door. Mm -hmm. So what I did was when I, after I had my come to Jesus moment Mm -hmm. at that point, I said, okay, great. How am I going to make it? How am I going to make a living doing this? Because I'm sure as heck not making a living the way I was scattershot and doing all my things. I knew that for sure. Yeah. Okay. That was just a disaster, actually. Yeah. So um, what I did was I attended a webinar and I did something that I would never normally do. And that is I put my credit card down for the system that was going to help me with the business aspect of coaching. Mm-hmm. I did not go to training right away. I went to how the heck can I make money? Cause that's what needed to happen. Right. 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 So, and as a byproduct of, of having this system in the background, little did I know I was going to get training on how to actually have a profitable business coaching. Wow. Yeah. So three, four months later, I emerged from that training program and I had my systems in the background all, all set up mm-hmm. uh, to be a profitable coach. I went through it all. I completed all the exercises and I graduated in the top 10. Uh, and I was featured on these people's website, right? And then I get this phone call sort of out of no place. And they said, hey, we're looking for apprentices, coaches on the team to, to train up, to help other people in the business of coaching. Right. Um, and so that was then. And now I have a certain aspect of my business that I'm a coach on a team and I've risen to like a senior level. So I now teach others through that process, through, through that company uh, Mm -hmm. on the business of coaching. So I'm um, I know a lot about it. You're a coach's coach. (laughs) Correct. In terms of business development. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I would say Mm -hmm. most of my clients are actually coaches. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for both the productivity stuff and also for this. Oh, really? Correct. Yeah. Oh, Not all, but, but many yeah. service-based entrepreneurs actually. So now you yeah. ask, but the question that you asked had to do with how did I do my coach training? Mm-hmm. Well, since I was going to be um, an apprentice, one of the requirements was that you are a certified coach. Mm-hmm. So in that moment of getting that training, I had to decide how am I going to get the required training right? As a coach. Yeah. And uh, I picked something called CTA, a coach training alliance, Mm -hmm. because my mentor said she knew the people and that I could do it all online and it wasn't too expensive. And I was just trying to check a box, Claire. doesn't mean it's the best of the best. Not by, there were just so many great programs out there. There's like CTI. Can I tell you how I picked mine? Sure. Well, I wanted something. I wanted executive coach program Mm -hmm. because I like working with people in the corporate refugees or people in the corporate setting still. Uh, And so I looked at some university programs and I looked at one that's in the same town as my mom. So I could visit her and when when I was going to study as well. So there was a combination life work benefit, if you will. So why not? It's got to fit into your life. Exactly. I mean, end of story, you've got to be able to pay for it. And it's got to, you've got to be able to carve out part of your life that the friction is minimal. It's got to flow. It's got to flow. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's got to be a, not effortless, but as effortless as it can be. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So well, my so, classes were like at 9 p.m. because that's when my kids went to bed and I had time. Yeah. So you're, you're saying so many things in there. But what I what I loved is is number one, the focus on making money, which is honestly something that I have not done like you did and and it would show in my business compared to yours for sure. So I celebrate that and I would encourage people to listen to the practicality and the smart the smarts of doing that and making that a priority because you can spend a lot of busy time fragmented but when you when you have to get, you come to Jesus or when you know shiz gets real or you know whatever yeah, it is, whatever you've got to really face the music and and you you're like it's it's on you to deliver right then what does it look like and what can you do so there's a, i love the introspection that came in that in that time and the practicality to say okay what have i got what am i called to do and that that you you know you've what success is my definition is that you're using your authentic skills in service of the world and that's what you're doing and make and not and without depleting yourself correct right so that's right 
So you're a beautiful example of that. So if listeners can can take away, you know, that nugget of self-awareness combined with practicality and making those pieces fit, this is this is a, a wonderful example. You mentioned the word mentor. Yeah. And I wonder if you could just touch on mentor versus coach. And what do you, what do you mean by mentor in this? Um what I even said. So it probably means my head coach, mm -hmm. right? When I said mentor. Yeah. She, she was the one who told you about um, CT, CTA, I think it was. Oh yeah, CTA. Yeah, sorry, uh, Coaches Training Alliance. So yeah, yeah. CTA, thank you. Um, you were right, no, I am not right on that. And yes, when I hired her, I actually wound up hiring her uh -huh. to help me be a better coach and make more money and so on. Yeah. And the first question she said was, okay, I'm gonna do a combination of coaching and mentoring. Is that okay with you? And I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, to that point, I think anybody who's a productivity coach is so just to back up for listeners, a lot of times the coaching methodology is we hold our clients fully capable and accountable um, for achieving what they want. And the answers are within you. What I find is people are also looking for some best practices. Mm -hmm. So what I do in my business, I'd love to hear what you do. I say that I work like a coach in my methodology and the way I hold you very capable, mm -hmm. but yeah. I will bring my knowledge and experience to you and offer it for your consideration with stories and examples and so on. So I'm not going to tell you, you must do it this way. I'm mm -hmm. going to offer you, you know, here's a story about something that happened. Is it something you want to try? Is it, does, is there, how does it land with you? Is it a fit? What, what, what do you think? Sure, and yeah. so, yeah. So this whole concept of sort of co-creating solutions is it's really kind of wonderful because the client is very wholly involved in that. And you don't carry, I don't want to use burden, but the responsibility of having all the answers on mm -hmm. you. It's, it's built together. So I just thought I would clarify that because not, people who are not familiar with coaching might not understand this difference between coaching and mentoring or consulting and, and how do you dance in that space and still have your integrity as a coach? Yeah. Well, you're absolutely right. I remember be, while I was still an organizer, I remember listening to um, coaches and I just thought, well, that's a pile of crap. Like, why, it, why don't they just tell them what to do? Like, how annoying is that? Absolutely. How annoying. I remember a, a coach coming to our organizing chapter meeting at Professional Organizers in Canada in Toronto. And I was like, you would annoy the crap out of me. Just give me the answer. And, and, <laughs> yes. Like, right? Just like, just if you already know, like, why are you holding out and being difficult and all, right? Exactly. It's yeah. maddening. So yeah. I try not to be maddening. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. But it, I, I had to, in the coach training, really wrestle with this perspective of yeah. co-creating with the client, which I yeah. adore now. I absolutely adore now. Yeah. But there are cli the clients that are coming to me are saying, I have a specific problem with this and this and this. And I'll say, yeah, we can talk about all those things. I will offer up what I know about those things. But what I also hold hold to is that we also don't know what is underneath those things and what are the higher level, bigger things that are impacting those symptoms sure. that clients often come with. So yeah. I invite them on a, on a, a discovery journey and the way I phrase it, and I love this. So sorry, everybody on the podcast, this is turning in a bit more of a, a sharing of, of both of us, but, but it's with an, an effort, I hope to help everyone understand the richness of coaching and Carol, your perspective, I value it so much. So I always, I often say, you know, and this is with organizing too, the client has the vision of what success looks like, right? Mm -hmm. I've always said, I'm at the hand at your back. You're telling me where, where we're going and I'm at the hand at your back and we're going there together, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a supportive yeah. thing. Um, just want to throw it back to you to say, how do you describe the dance, if you will, or the journey that you're going on with the client? What, do you have any language to describe that? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't really ever get asked that question. <laughs> so, um, if I were to describe what coaching is, is that really the question? Well, I think for listeners who are thinking, oh, 
coach sounds interesting. Productivity sounds interesting. How do I work as a coach, even with an organizing client? What does it mean? What is it different than sure. people have seen in their experience already? Okay, I got you. All right. So the best coaching, in my opinion, is learning to listen to what is not being said. That's it. Can you say that one more time? The best coaching, in my opinion, is learning to listen to what is not being said. I, and it takes a different presence to do that. Mm -hmm. um, to feel like you don't have to fill in the blanks. If there's dead, if there's airtime and somebody's processing and thinking and maybe coming up with it. Mm -hmm. um, tell me more about why you say that's the definition of coaching. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's because of what you just described. And you said, if somebody is coming to you in a corporate place and they want help with, I don't know, time management and organizing their stuff and getting more done in less time and dealing with difficult people and who, who knows what all else is they're coming with, you know, communicating with their team, fill in the blink. And so the way my approach to coaching would be, what do you want to be different in a year from now? What, what looks different? Why is that important to you? Mm -hmm. What, what, if, if nothing changes, how is that negatively impacting your life? Um, so what, just keep unpeeling that. So unpeeling, so you got to do the unpeeling of why it's so bad. Yeah. Hold that, then allow somebody to, to leapfrog over and then imagine what it could look like. That's harder. That's hard. Now this is, this process is true regardless of you, if you're organizing, if you're selling yeah. somebody any sort of service, you yeah. know, right. It's, it's all, it's marketing 101. Well, and especially if you're in it. So just thinking of organizing clients, if you're in the house and you're surrounded by the pain of it, the visioning of what's possible is extremely hard. So some yeah. sort of creating some space, creating some distance from it and, and create yeah. And well, coaches talk a lot about holding space, but it's it's creating that safe moment in time where yeah. we can actually allow for that deep pressured thinking and yeah. what's calming the amygdala. So it's not there's no stress response happening here. This is an allowing the feeling to happen and possibility to open up. Yeah. Yeah. So coaching is all about um, discerning and living into the possibilities that are always there and you just can't see because I always say things like well you know what I understand is that you've got this pain so if somebody is stepping on your foot for example and you know the person next to you is saying so when somebody steps gets off your foot um what how what kind of a marathon do you think you might want to run it's like <laughs> uh can you just get off my foot and we can maybe see if it's broken, you know, right. that's, that's the person with too much stuff that they can't yeah. see their walls or whatever the case may be. They're not talking about once all their stuff is gone. And yeah. in coaching, we, we often can't, we hold a vision bigger than our client yeah. knows. We hold that space and we have to be very careful in how much can we push them in that moment in time? Because they can maybe only get to a certain level. And once that level, so like in a mountain, like you can't see the top, you could only see because it's blocked by the view. So you get up to that certain mountain and then you're like, this is awesome, but oh my gosh, wow, I didn't realize there's those other mountains there. Heck yeah, let's fl have some supplies flew in because I am down for this and you're gonna right. go up to that next mountain. So, yeah. um, not sure how that applies, but I think you're asking for the question behind the question. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is in that initial interview process is really hear what they're not saying mm -hmm. because they oftentimes are in complete disconnect with what they really want because all they really want to do is survive the day every day. Mm -hmm. So it requires this listening to what's not really there. And I'll use an example without any, any real details because the other thing about coaching is it's all confidential. 100%. I had a discovery call with a woman and she didn't know what a discovery call was. Yeah. 
So she said, oh, well, I said, well, what brings you to this call? Mm -hmm. Well, what brings me to this call is you, you were on, we were on that group networking thing and you said you specialize in people in, with squirrel brain. And I said, yeah, absolutely. So, and then I started asking her the deep questions and she says, well, gosh, I don't think we could get that deep in 15 minutes. I said, well, if you looked, <laughs> if you looked at the call, it's a 40 minute call and I can go up to an hour if you'd like can we go deep in that time? I said, I know I can. Yeah. I said, it's your choice now. So I gave her, you're always a choice in coaching. Mm -hmm. The client is always a choice. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, you have a couple of ways to go right now. You can either say, uh, cause I'm happy to do this. If that's what you came to the call for. You want 15 minutes of me dumping out my brain mm -hmm. and all the, tr the tricks and tips. I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to go deeper, and really begin to understand what's upstream and what's causing mm -hmm. the downstream issues, mm -hmm. why you're so busy and you can't get to your priorities and all these other things that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to do that. Which way do you want to go? Mm -hmm. And she didn't know what to say. She started going down both roads and I had to pull her back and ask her the same question again. Yeah. And finally we landed on, she wanted to go deep. So we did. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it, it goes to places. It's not therapy, but some people who don't quite understand what therapy is sometimes say it's like, wow, you're like a therapist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I get it. It's not therapy. So that is listening to what's not being said. It's not getting swept up in the details of what the yeah. question is and how I oftentimes will, which is another question you ask, how do you describe it? Mm -hmm. I'll describe it as that, that brain dumping out of, of how to, you know, how to organize spreadsheets, how to, mm -hmm. you know, how to plan your week, whatever, whatever it is, is the tools in the toolbox. Yeah. yeah. That's all that is. And we can do that. But the truth is, is just because you got the toolbox doesn't mean you're actually going to be able to build the house. That's right. So what do you want to do? And then they're a choice. Mm -hmm. That's coaching. It's a great description. And, and I liked your very much the analogy of you're climbing a mountain and you can't see what's above the clouds on that mountain. You can't right? see. Yeah. No, no, the coach can't see and the person can't see. No. So, so you've got to explore together, but it's this commitment to explore together. The other thing I think might be interesting for, for listeners in the relationship, and because this could come up in organizing too, you have a client and you're just, you care so much about them succeeding. And it's really interesting as a, as a coach uh, in particular, I've been very clear that I need to work with clients who are motivated because we're coaching is mm -hmm. about affecting transformation. And if the, if the client isn't there like ready for it, that's going to be hard. It's like you, you, like with organizing too, you would go to someone's home and they're like really not committed to the process. So you're going to spin, mm -hmm. you're going to spin and it's not going to be deeply gratifying. So mm -hmm. part of the onboarding, if you will, is like how, how ready for you are, how ready are you for this? How, what kind of priority mm -hmm. does this take in your life? That yeah. cost, cost question you asked, you know, if it doesn't happen, what's the, what does it matter? Yeah. What's the, what's the impact of that? So yeah, lots of rich, uh, lots of rich process in what you're talking about, which helps you find out if you're going to walk this journey together. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would love if you could share for people um, a bit of an understanding of what, you know, what in your process is successful? What do you say are like, these are the things that I do that really turn people who are, you know, didn't know about you or have learned about you how do you take them on the journey from to know you, to like you, to trust you, to, to try you, to buy from you? you know? Yeah, that's a great question. And as, as business owners, we are always have to be what they call, some people call filling our funnel, right? Mm -hmm. We always have to be planting seeds out there because if, if we don't, our marketing train will go along wonderfully and suddenly we'll just run out of gas and stop. So I think what you're asking me is how do I continue to plant my seeds and how do I nurture them through the sequence that is needed so that, you know, the first time you, you meet them on the street, uh, you're not asking them how many kids they want that, you know, when you get married, <laughs> right? Can I just echo right there or highlight for listeners that Carol did something there that coaches do, which is give back to the client what they heard 
to make sure they heard it correctly and to make sure that they're on the same page. So not only did you hear me correctly, you articulated it beautifully. So okay, yes, good. That's good, a, good, good. That's a, that's full on, yes. Yeah. Sure. Well, this and this doesn't happen overnight, right? Um, before the show, or maybe even the beginning of the show, I said, like, I coach coaches, like, that's mostly who service based entrepreneurs, but it's mostly coaches. And I sometimes have a lot of people that are sort of follow me. And I'll hear things like, well, I want to do a workshop like that, like, you know, next month. And they've like, just barely started their business. Right. And I have to sort of like, go, hang, hang tight. It's taken me a long time to get here. <laughs> the overnight success so, that you are has yeah, been. Yeah, I'm an overnight success 12 years later, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, talk about like in this, if you can, in this process, some of the things that you do so consistently to serve okay. the people that are, you know, following Carol's in Carol's orbit, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. I think that um, I want to start with when you're first starting and then I can kind of hop over to what I'm doing now. So when we're first starting, um, what I hear the most is, um, how do I get clients? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's such it, the 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 um, the answer is um, complicated, but but simple, and that is to um, number one, know what transformation that you provide, like know it, like you know your name. Mm -hmm. That has a whole sort of subset subset of of things, right? Yeah. Um, be just relentless and, and open and confident and fake it, whatever you need to do to pretend that it's all good because you can't walk into a networking meeting, whether it's a virtual or not a virtual and sort of like hide behind the curtain and pretend somebody and think that somebody's going to come over and say, so Oh my gosh, I've waited for you my whole life. You're saying be the imposter, like be, own yeah. the imposter. Being the, be the imposter only in, in, in of the, that you're holding space for yourself Mm -hmm. of who you want to be. So you're in the imposter, but you're not. Oh, can I just, does that make sense? hundred percent. And I wanted to just, um, hearken back to, um, alter ego, a book by Todd Herman, because he talks about, I think Beyonce has an alter ego and she showed up as that alter ego until she felt she didn't need it anymore. Right. I think Kobe Bryant had an alter right. ego. So the, some of these high performers are like, when I need to do my thing, I'm, I'm showing up in a certain way. And that's, yeah. so I think that's what you're, we're talking about. So it's not, it's not, there's, so I think it speaks to the discomfort that there is about something new, not that you're being right. inauthentic or not right. that you're trying to give therapy without being a therapist. It's not talking about overstepping right. what you're general, you're capable of serving, but it's a tool to feel confident enough in the moment that right. you can deliver it authentically and continue to grow into that person that you're meant to pretend be. you are that little girl on the top of the couch mm -hmm. with with a wonder woman outfit that jumps off and says that's it i'm going to save the world mm -hmm. because that's truly who you are and, and your clients need to have you feel that to yeah trust in working with you you've got to present that I'm a safe person to hold. Like this is a good hand you can hold. It's not going right. to drop you. Right. Right. Yeah. So when you're first starting, uh, go deep within say, I know I could do a lot of things to a lot of people with a lot of people. And that's usually like, you know, there's no niche, there's no focus. It's just yeah. all over the place. Just focus on something. Even if it's wrong, doesn't matter. You're going to start somewhere. Right. Yeah. And then that's number one, start talking to people about it be of service, ask questions, do research. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm starting this out. What are, what are some of the typical problems that you run into and so on and so forth. This is right when you're first starting. Okay. And then that's one. And then once you get a little bit of traction with that, say to yourself, huh, well, you know, if I'm doing organ, I'll use organizing, for example, and people know this, I'm gonna say it anyway. So if I'm an organizer, who, who's a great referral partner? Well, maybe it's, you know, a moving yeah. company, maybe it's a realtor, right? So depending on the kind of coach you are, who's a great, you know, like I was working with a love coach uh, this morning mm -hmm. and her referral partners were divorce attorneys and wellness coaches, uh -huh. right? Or like yoga people. Like, yeah. so because when you are first starting and going back to trying to make some money, I'm all about making the money, right? right. It's like, you want to borrow their audience because you don't have an audience yet. Yeah. 
right? And going back yeah. to the biggest problem when people first start, they don't know how to quote unquote get clients, Yeah. right? It's a multifaceted yeah. issue. So yeah. that's when you're first starting. Now, fast forward a few years later, now you, be you begin to have your own following and that's really cool. So now, you're, now the question is, well, how do you um, build, nurture, serve your audience? And I, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. So almost five years ago, I was going through a workbook and um, by Leonie Dawson, actually, who's a uh, who's from Australia. She's really she's out there and she's fun. And anyway, I got to this page that said, do something great for your list, like just out of pure generosity. So yeah. I said, OK, that's it. In February, I'm going to start something and I'm going to call it lunchtime love. And on Mondays at noon, first Monday of the month, mm -hmm. because it served me like that. Um, I'm just going to do an open Q and a and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And almost every single, well, actually every single month, somebody at least has shown up. And now I'm at the point where I usually get around, you know, 12 people and mm -hmm. it's completely free. So I have built my whole sort of, you, at, you talked about consistency, yes. the whole structure of my, um, my messaging is, is goes like this. So first Monday, uh, it's now evolved instead of lunchtime love, because that didn't really say anything like what the heck was that? It's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's now we're now we're in wisdom warriors that may change again, but it's people who want some wisdom. Right. Um, so that is every first Monday. Sometimes it's the second, if there's a holiday or for mm -hmm. any other reason that I may not want to do it that day. Um, and what it is, is we have a theme. Mm -hmm. so uh like so that starts everything so i've got 12 months worth of themes mm -hmm. that are pre-planned yep right and then i what i do is i and that's an open call anybody can come the first 15 minutes are training the the last 45 minutes are open q a and coaching and so on okay right the, the this, is the, this is the ability for people to sample you bingo right. thank you for saying that because that's exactly right because, and you know, and people don't know, they just think, oh God, I can't afford you. In fact, I had somebody this morning, Facebook messaged me from one of my communities mm -hmm. and she just said, have a good day. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, you have a good day too. And then she said, you know, we started this whole Facebook conversation. Well, I really love your e email. I said, great. Well, I'd really like to take, you know, a class sometime that you offer, except I can't afford it. And I said, well, I do have this free monthly thing. Did you know? Oh, I didn't know. Uh huh. Boom. Exactly. So now she's coming yeah. in. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, so you do I'll have just... to, yeah, you have to have, this is, this is the gap that I'm just working to start filling yeah. in my business. I have like the coaching, which is up here. And yeah. then I have an ebook and an online course, but I don't have this way to engage that people who want to taste and, and, and experience you and get some answers. Well, you, you know, know what, Claire, Co coming up this next Monday at noon Eastern, if you're available, you should jump on and just be sort of like, um, you can be my co-host and I could just introduce you as the, uh, the uh, international superstar that you are and just say that, you know, you're my special guest and maybe you could um, say a few words of wisdom from your point of view or who knows, but, but oh, you, and then you, you can see how I Love run it. it and see what you like. So thank anyway, um, yeah, so everything hangs off of that. Yeah. And then what I do is I have my two newsletters that come out. One is the Tuesday prior and one is the Tuesday prior to that. And I okay. time that with the blogs. So does that make sense? Yeah. So blog one comes out kind of mid month, the month before, yeah. and that there's no selling to that po yeah. blog two comes out the Tuesday before. And there's mention of, Oh, by the way, if you want to register for this, um, next month's wisdom warriors here's the topic here's what you're going to learn mm -hmm. and then uh the third email goes out the night before sunday at 4 p.m and i always yeah. have a little um a little video that goes with it um yeah just because i do and that's the and that's the rhythm and that's one yeah. of the ways that i bring people in to yeah. nurture them and you've been doing this for how long now um it's like it's gotten better but five years five years right did you yeah and when did you know you were onto something because you went from one person coming in maybe yeah. maybe maybe not like you have to show up for a while before you're like regularly 12 people and you know you're gonna show yeah. up to something yeah i'd say like probably about six or eight months ago it started really getting great <laughs> before that 
yeah before that it was probably like you know four people here or there it's when yeah that's that's when it that's started fascinating do you yeah. think that has anything to do with the context context we have with people more at home yeah yeah like it that? does i think yeah. it does and i also think that huh. because of my involvement in what i was telling you i was coach on the coach team because all those people wind mm -hmm. up on my list right and and so right so that's that's one of my my main channels of yeah. funneling people in. Yeah. So um, I'm not selling to them, but they begin. I'm I become more visible in that community. No, I I, I was really curious about the things that you've decided really work for you okay. in continuing to attract your ideal client and and make them, you know, go through that journey. So yeah, okay. anything you want to share on that? We're we're about I think we're about 40, 40 minutes in. The okay, so whatever you want to do, but well, I could listen to you all day. So, uh, okay. but maybe we could you could share a couple more things, um, sure. and then and then we'll, we'll networking and speaking. You and I know each other from the speaking for fees. We co-led it together. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing like speaking in front of your ideal clients. I mean, just hands down. And to me, networking and speaking work really well together because through networking, you learn more. You get that know, like, and trust really deeply, and that can lead into that speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, speaking is a little bit, you can probably tell, say more about this than me, but it's a little bit different now, of course, because we're all online. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I spoke in front of a mastermind group uh, probably two weeks ago. And one of the folks that, um, and I did interviews with different people who wanted to, like just to do some follow-up. And one of the people is actually enrolled in my group coaching that starts uh, today at 4 p.m. So she said yes to herself and she decided yeah. that her next best step was that. Uh, there you go. So yeah, multiple different funnels, something you're yep. hosting somewhere you're the guest credible expert, um, right? Where you're positioned that way and people are absorbing your content. They're sampling you live essentially Correct. in that, in that, uh, in that place. So brilliant. Um, I think that's fantastic. I'm, I'm hoping that anybody who's thinking about getting into coaching will really explore, you know, getting the training so that you understand and you can shake that imposter feeling. I too got training because I, I, I had clients recognizing they're like, the work you're doing is deeper than the stuff. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. and I'm like, but uh, I remember the first person that asked me to coach them was a corporate client. I was helping him with his home office. And he said, could you, could you come into the office and help me at work? And I was mm. like, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not a coach, but we booked yeah. sessions. And I said, at any point you can cancel, which is kind of an ethical thing with coaches anyway. Um, right. If we're not serving anymore, then we, we figure we wrap it up. But, right. uh, and that began a beautiful relationship. And I saw the kind of transformation that he went through and I was like, oh, I need to go get, I need to go to be able to learn how to do this mm -hmm. really effectively and help people with greater impact on their yeah. journey to what they're yeah. aiming for. So, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I get you sister and I applaud Ooh. all the success that, um, that you've achieved. I will take you up on your offer to join you and you should. Uh, I will absolutely. And, okay. um, so, so for people listening, who might want to find this group and understand what you're doing and, and perhaps participate, learn, watch, observe. Um, how would they find you, Carol? Sure. You, you can go to my website and I'll spell it right. It's epstime.com. So E is an egg, P is in Peter, S is in Sam, hyphen, time, T I M E.com. That's the website. If you want to find the free group, what you do is you go to Wisdom Warriors right on the front, on the top there, it says Wisdom Warrior Groups. It's a pull down. You hit that and you'll, you'll come to a page and it will show um, all the different topics of all the different, the next 12 months. And right at the very top, there'll be a giant orange button that you can't possibly miss. And if you hit that, you will register yourself for the next Wisdom Warriors, or you can also register at that lady I was telling you on Facebook. She she registered for the next twelve. <laughs> She's like, all in. Well, I are but, all in. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's someone that, like how ideal is that? And then she's on a journey with you. Yeah. She's going to learn and grow with you. And then if right. she ever needs to deepen that work, then that's she's right. so ready to say, Carol's the right person for me to work with. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Awesome. So well, that's you. fantastic. So we'll make sure that that's easy to find in the show notes as well. So okay. everyone listening, it'll be there. Just go to the podcast page and you will find it. Okay. Um, so Carol, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. I, I could spend so much time with you. It's always right. a pleasure. Right. So, right. And, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> for everyone listening, I want to bring this episode of Stand Out to a close, uh, letting you know you can find more episodes at napopodcast.com. Subscribe there. It's on all the places that you would expect to find a podcast. And let us know on social media. We're, we're in all the places, Napo National as well. So let us know what you think, if there's someone you'd like to hear from, if there was something particular poignant out of all the things that Carol said today and shared with us. Show us some love there and share it also with other entrepreneurs or service-based businesses, because this is all about bettering your business. And so if you're an organizer productivity coach and you want to show some love and be generous to your list, perhaps there's something in here that would be useful for them. Uh, I want to wish you all a, um, a happy and safe future. Be kind to yourself, stay safe and enjoy your journey. All right. Well, thank you, Claire. So Carol, I couldn't let you go without asking you one more question. Okay. So, right? So I, I have heard something about calorie-free cake in your business. And I'm number one, dead curious about what that is. <laughs> and I want you to tell me what, what this is and, yeah. and how you've woven this, you know, this concept into your business. And, yeah. and, and what can our listeners take away as like, oh my God, this is the best juicy, tasty nugget I've ever heard. Okay. I, I love this question on a lot of levels. And what, I, what I'm going to invite the listener to think about is when we're organizing, we know that we take a mess and we create order. And it is a physical thing that, that, that happens. The client can go, oh my gosh, wow, look, I can see my desk and so on, right? That's a, that's a no-brainer. However, when we're coaching, which is the whole topic of this, right? Mm -hmm. Business of coaching and the process of coaching and just getting into coaching, it's kind of this like nebulous thing, right? You it's can't see like, it. You don't know. It is like, well, where are we going? What's going to go on? You know, what's it look like? How do I know it's going to work? It's really expensive. Am I worried? Like all those things. Yeah. And when we can have a visual, like a model of like, you're going to start here. Then these are the steps. These are the pro. This is the process. Mm -hmm. And, and then you're going to get something like here now these are the steps these these people that i because remember at the beginning we talked about pains and pleasure your ideal client it's like you're here like everybody else that has those productivity issues or fill in the blank your your client's issues and you want to get here mm -hmm. here are the broad steps that those folks have taken that got them to here and you can do it too and the yeah. fact that they have a visual and they can see they're like, oh, wow. And so right. I created my own little um, version of that. Can I, can I show it? Oh yeah. Can I show it? Okay. So, so calorie free cake I mentioned, right? So this is Carol's success cake, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. Am I yep. showing that right? A there we go. Higher. Let me, yeah, let me make it. it. Okay. Woo! So can you see All there's right. cake there? And there so just cake. briefly, why don't you explain what, what people are seeing? So for the, for the people on the podcast, what am I showing for the people? Absolutely. On so, right. You're seeing um, a red outlined cake, lots of different pieces in it. Um, and they're all square, but they're different kinds color squares. Sorry. They're different uh, size squares. Right. right. But here's what I want you to take away. On the, th the third layer is the productivity, right? The other two layers below that are not productivity. Mm -hmm. so, so what I often will say is, well, I know you want help with you know, your time management and your anti-procrastination and all that. We will do that and that is it, this third layer. But here's what I know is true. When you're not sleeping at night, maybe your nutrition isn't the right thing. Maybe you're not doing your, your you know, you're not having your medicine and your, you know, your house is a mess and you're, you don't have the right goals. Those are layers yeah. in, of the bottom layer is all about your health. The next layer up is all about your environment. And if too many pieces are missing or, or not strong enough in your cake, what's going to happen? The whole thing will fall in, right? Exactly. <laughs> so we cannot, it is a complete waste of time 
to start with how do I stop procrastinating? The right place to start is what's going on with those basic things at the bottom. 100%. 100%. I find this the same thing. The symptoms bring people in and then yeah. we peel back, peel back. And, and a lot of people will not have the, they won't have an awareness of that greater context. So right. that broadens thinking. So tell me just on a practical level, this is something you kind of let clients know about right at the beginning. So they have a sense of where they're going to go. Then you don't right. hide this. This is like, no. here's my, here's my model. <laughs> This is where we're going. Come on the cake journey with me. It's going to yeah. be tasty and it's going to be tasty. <laughs> right. So, so thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that because I think that's, it's really powerful. I have built models in my business too. I don't think they're as fun as yours. So I'm like, a really like the fun factor in this. You've got to create something people want to aspire to. So kudos yeah. to you for all of that, um, yeah. Carol. And uh, for anybody that wants to check out this success cake, they would find that on your website. EPS yes, it's my downloadable. Um, yeah, it's my downloadable ebook, right? So okay. you go to EPS uh, time.com. E is an egg, P is in Peter, S is in Sam hyphen uh, time, T I M E dot com. And if you scroll down the homepage, you'll see you'll a find giant, it. you know, big cake, like you want to sink your teeth into. Yeah. And then you put your name and email and then poof, It'll not only give you the cake model, but it'll give you steps to work through right. that yourself so yeah. that you can get some traction yourself. So this is a client's first taste, literally, of working with you. That's and right. you give them something so they can be like, oh, I like the feel of this. This is fun. That's right. Right? That's right. Oh, so thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, a Absolutely. wonderful tip. Again, Carol, thanks again for your time. It's been such a pleasure to have you, I guess. Oh, thank you, Claire. You're awesome.